I'm looking for Mr. Polly. It seems he cannot be found. Mr. Polly, sir? Oh, I haven't seen him for some time, sir. Mr. Polly, sir? No, sir. Tell me, where is Mr. Polly? I don't know, sir. Then said Sir Lancelot, gazing across the valley to where the river menandered through fields of corn, my lady and queen, this is the hardest and most mischievous adventure ever attempted in all chivalry. about on the floor? Get up at once, Mr. Polly. It has come to my notice, Mr. Polly, that we are not happy in our work. That perhaps we are not entirely suited to it. That we are a slacker. And that we need to buck up. That instead of studying our trade, we prefer to enjoy ourselves. Staying out to ungodly hours. You see, sir? Yes, Mr. Polly. I would like to remind you, Mr. Polly, that when we applied for a position in this establishment, we gave every assurance of being a smart young man, that we had every intention of getting on. Of getting on, Mr. Polly. Or getting out! Get out, sir! Get out of my sight! Get out! <laughs> Six years experience. I've had six years experience. That's a lot. No more vacancies. Get a job, can you? You don't get a job anywhere. Well, not a trade I ever ordered chosen, really. Father's fault. He put me into it. Social misfit, that's what I am. Polly? Yes. Something for me. Good news. Found a situation, have you? No, it's my father. He's dangerously ill. Never knew him very 
very well, did I? I'm a stranger to me. Took me the pantomime there every year. Crystal Palace. Temper two. That time he wanted to get the sofa upstairs and it jammed. Kicked and struck at it. Lost control altogether. Never forgot it. Looks peaceful. It was a merciful relief. Second, uh, second departed I've ever seen. We did all we could. Oh, no doubt of it, old man. We were just talking about the funeral, cousin Alfred. You'll have to have a hearse, of course. Not one of them combinations with the driver sitting on the coffin. Disrespectful, I think they are. I do like them glass hearses. So refined and nice. Bodger's hearse, you'll have. It's the best in Easewood. Oh, everything's right and proper. You'll want a mourner's carriage or two, of course. According to whom you're going to invite. Didn't think of inviting anyone. You can't let your father go to his grave without asking a few friends. Funereal baked meats like. Well, not baked. But you'll have to give them something, of course. Ham and chicken's very suitable. Bit valterial, isn't it? Where will you get your morning? Haven't thought about it, old man. I suppose I must have morning. Well, if I were you, I should get ready made trousers. That's all you really need. Black satin tie, top hat with deep mourning band, and gloves. Jack Cuff thinks he ought to have his chief mourner. Not obligatory. It shows respect. Oh, it shows respect, of course. Chasing the old man about to the last. Wish I'd looked him up a bit more while he was alive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There you are, Alfred. These are your cousins, Larkins. This is Annie. Oh. And this is Miriam. <laughs> and this is Millie. Right oh. I see. Oh. And here's Aunt Larkins. I should have known him anywhere. Oh, I bet Mother, she's never set eyes on him before. I should have known him anywhere for Lizzie's child. You've got her eyes. It's a resemblance. And as for never seeing him, I've dandled him, Miss Impudence. You couldn't dandle him now, Ma. Oh, thank you. Sorry, Annie. Oh. Oh. My dandling days are over. Oh. My turn to dandle. Oh. You hear? You would be. Are these your girls? They are, and better girls are. Is that Annie? Well, fancy you remembering her name. She mucked up my vegetable plot, the baggage. Trounced her, I did, fairly. I remember her. Have you nailed him down yet? Yeah. You always was a bit ahead of what was needful. <laughs> I'm glad you were able to come, Uncle. Oh, I came. I came. <laughs> Who's this, boy? I brought Willie. Here's May Pants. Thank you, William. Oh, it's oh, nice good of you to ask. Bridget, you are looking well. Oh, oh Mrs. Larkins, how very nice to see you. Here, here. Can't you go squashing by it? It ain't the kind of hat you see nowadays. Oh, you know your way, I think, don't you, upstairs? You have our gloves on. Oh, here, 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 here,
enjoy the view no more than words can tell. I was just reminding Grace of the dear dead you days. You did not suppose, Mr. Morley, think to have your poor dear father pay us more, Tim. I didn't think of it for a moment. I can't give us more of this brawn, can I? Grace and beauty, they used to call us. Don't swallow your fork, will it? You see, Mr. Pollitt, I used to have a young gentleman, a medical student, lodging with me. And Mr. Potter, I didn't give you very much air. Can you get past? I think it's important. There she used to sit as far as The contents of the stomach at any rate ought to be examined. And the fun she used to make of everything, nobody could believe. See, that's the hustle again. I would if you did as much now. That I would. Back in this gift. I won't have my girl spoken of, not by anybody. Old or young. <laughs> Ain't the beer up. It's the heated room. Excuse me, sir, passing so soon again. Right? Oh, yeah. Alfred, you left it and you got the coming, he said. Everything must be took out of wooden spirit. Get their pens in the ink and keep their noses out of it. Because other people's daughters never ever had any of their own. Alfred. If you choke yourself, my lord, not another mouthful do you have. And that's the thing she did every afternoon for a week. Really? Alfred. And then they had it. They found it swallowed the pretty key to open the drawer. No wish to make myself disagreeable, not for God's sake. Alfred. I was pretty busy with that drawer. Little dog. Oh, well, Fred. Funereal games. Don't hurt him, of course. Doesn't matter to him. Feel the need of fresh air, Alfred? You ever thought of um, investing that money of yours? Money? What money? The old man left you. Pretty near 500 pounds, with insurance. 500 pounds? Yes. You'll have to do something with it. Give you a tidy income, if you invest it properly. Always no end of things you can put it in. Might do worse than put it into a small shop. Shop? Hmm, shop. A man who sticks to it, there's a lot to be done in a shop. I haven't got to go back to a shop. None of I don't want to. Ever. What do you think you'll do, then? Buy a bicycle. exercises. Good idea, right -o.
I didn't mean to shut you out. I've just told Ma. We're all in a bit of a mess today, you know. It's my cleaning up day. Hello, Wilfred. Come in, come in. Come in here, Wilfred. You've caught us on the opposite saying it, but welcome all the same. Oh, I am glad to see you again, Elfrid. <laughs> I didn't know you could ride a bicycle, Alfred. Oh. Alfred's bicycle's over my heart all the way here. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I, I had a bit of a contretemps. What you might call an accidentulous misadventure. Oh, <laughs> why, whatever happened? Stout elderly gentleman, shirt sleeves, large straw waste paper basket sort of hat, starts to cross the road. You never run him down, Alfred. You never run him down. Not me, madam. I never run anything down. Oh. <laughs> Wobble. Oh. Ring the bell. Wobble. Oh. Wobble. Didn't ring his bell. I hadn't got a bell. Just ran into me. Over I went, clinging to his vulnerable head. <laughs> well, what happened then? Well, we uh, we sat about amongst the debris and had a bit of an argument. Oh. I said he oughtn't come out wearing such a dangerous sort of an hat. He said if he couldn't control his hat, he ought to leave it at home. Oh. You never run into anything. Never swelt me. Oh, oh any old nag. Whoa, my frisky ace has poor free. The big thing says. You never know what he won't say next. Evening, old man. Not had an accident, Alfred. <laughs> Not much. Uh, no, uh, the, the pedal got a bit loose in Stampton, old man. I couldn't ride it, so I looked up the cousins while I waited. Not the Larkins lot? Yes. See any shops in Stampton? Shops? Yes, shops. Uh, no, uh, nothing to speak of, old man. Doesn't do to waste too much time, you know. Of course, we're very happy to have you here. All right, I'll, I'll look into it tomorrow, first thing. Go off on my bicycle. Good night, Alfred. Good night, old man. Any assistance? I don't know. I, I didn't know anyone was here. Sorry if I'm intrudacious. It isn't that I, I oughtn't to get over the wall. It's out of bounds, at least in term time. But this being holidays. Oh, holidays is different. I don't want to actually break the rules. Well, leave them behind you, where they're safe. I think I'll stay on the wall, so long as some of them is in bounds. Bicycle? So do I. I suppose there's no harm in our talking. No, no, it's a kindness. I was just sitting here in melancholic retrospectaciousness. You know, you make me feel like one of those old knights who rode about the country looking for dragons and beautiful maidens and chivalrous adventures. Oh, why? 
beautiful maiden. Nonsense. Oh, yes, you are, you know. I I'm not the first to tell you that. A beautiful maiden imprisoned in an enchanted school. <laughs> you wouldn't think it enchanted. And here am I, clad in steel. Well, at least my, my fiery war horse is. Willing to absquatulate all the dragons and rescue you. <laughs> you should see the dragons. Fly with me. <laughs> you are funny. I haven't known you five minutes. We don't even know each other's names. Yours is the prettiest name in the world. How do you know? Well, it must be. It is rather pretty. It's Christabel. There you are. What did I tell you? And yours? Alfred. I can't call you Alfred. Well, um, well, Polly then. It's a girl's name. I shan't forget it. There is love at first sight. I think I ought to get back over the wall. Oh, it needn't matter to you. I'm just a nobody. But I know that you're the best and most beautiful thing I've ever spoken to. There's no harm in telling you that, is there? I should have to go back if I thought you were serious. Look! Night. Night there. Lady? Come again. At your command. But... Yes? Just one finger. What do you mean? To kiss. over a week now. Now, I, I can't keep up this gesticulatious game any longer. I'm not a knight. I'm nobody and nothing. But look here. Will, will you wait for me for five years? You, you're just a girl yet, and it, it wouldn't be hard. I've always been just dilatentilating about till now, but I could work. I just woke up. Wait till I get a chance with the money I've got. But you haven't got much money. I've got enough to take a chance with. Some sort of chance. I'll, I'll make a chance. I mean what I say. I'll, I'll stop trifling and shirking, and, and if I do... Don't. Don't what? Don't go on being like this. You're... You're different. Go on being the knight who wants to kiss my hand. Yes, but you see, I... Shut up, Rosie. You idiot. He'll see you. You're spoiling everything. You, you've got someone? Oh, you filthy little beast! <laughs> Alfred. Where you been all this time? Oh, looking round. What have you been doing to your face? Uh, bit of a scrape with a bicycle. You ought to have someone look after your scrapes. All rough it is. Found a shop? Oh, one or two lucky ones. You're taking your time about it, I must say. 
Well, oh, don't do to be too precipitous. No. Once you've got it, you've got it. Like choosing a husband. Better see you've got it good. Oh, I'll, I'll find a shop, all right, you. You don't want to worry about that. I mean, I do. I, I still have a cat. Well, I must make a home for a cat, you know. What? To catch mice? No, sleep in the window. Cat I'm going to have. And a canary. Funny, I never thought of that before, but a, well, a cat and canary seem to go, you know. Summer weather, I sort of sit in a little room behind the shop. Sun streaming through the window. Cat asleep on the chair. Canary singing. Mrs. Polly. Hello. Mrs. Polly, frying an extra bit of bacon. Cat singing, canary singing, kettle singing, bacon singing. Mrs. Polly. And who's Mrs. Polly going to be? Figment of imagination, ma'am. Put in to fill up the picture. And I, uh, I think I must have a bit of a garden. But I don't mean a fierce sort of garden, earnest industry. No, just a, just a patch of sturgeon and sweet pea. Creeper up the back of the house. You will have it nice. Oh, rather. Tingling a ling, -ling shop. <laughs> Smart little shop. Counter, desk, all complete. Umbrella stand, carpet on the floor, cat asleep on the counter, all right. I wonder you don't set about it right off. Well, I mean to get it exactly right. For instance, I've got to have a tomcat. Wouldn't do to wake up one morning and find the shop full of kittens. You can't sell kittens. <laughs> <laughs> to mother, I wish we had a cat. But we couldn't have a cat here. Not with no yard. Ever had a cat myself? Might get them together. Why? How do you mean? Shot and cat thrown in. Mean to say? dog. Eating my bicycle tire. Thought, th thought my bicycle was on fire. I it's all right, really. Little dog. Uh, outside. Uh, Miriam ready? What for? To go and meet Annie. You're a rummin. Miriam! There isn't a little dog anywhere, Alfred. I had, a, had a very uh, curious sensation. I felt exactly as if something, something was up somewhere. All right now. You were saying something about a cat. Give you one. Day my shop's opened. Shop, well, there are drawbacks, of course, but one is one's own master. That wasn't all talk. No, not a bit of it. After all, a little shop needn't be so bad. It's a home. It's a home. Let's sit down in this seat where we can see those blue flowers. One did ought to be happy in a shop. Such a respectable thing to be. I could be happy in a shop. If I had the right company. I'm not such a blooming geezer as not to be able to sell goods a bit. I shall do all right. If you get the right company. I shall get that all right. You don't mean you've got someone. I've got someone in my eye this minute. Oh, Alfred. 
You don't mean... I do. Not really. You and me, Miriam, in a little shop with the cat and canary. Just suppose it. You, for... you mean you're in love with me? Yes. Oh, Alfred. I didn't dream you cared. Sometimes I thought it was Annie and sometimes Minnie. Oh, I always liked you better than them. I've loved you, Alfred, ever since we met at your poor father's funeral. Just can't believe it. Nor I. Do you really mean to marry me and open that little shop? Yes. Oh, yes. I, I, I've heard of a little place over at Fishbourne. I haven't quite made up my mind, but... Well, I'll take it. Oh, Alfred, it's just like a dream. Don't, uh... Don't tell anyone yet a bit. Only Ma. <laughs> She's going to kiss me, Alfred, now that we're alone together. Be careful of my hat. Alfred. Where's it from? Can't make it ghouling give it is. Them again, I might have known. Dear sir, unless we have... Sixty pounds! Alfred, what are you going to do? Nothing, I suppose. As usual. I ought to know better than to have asked. You've always been the same ever since we came here. You're lazy, Alfred. That's what's the matter with you. You're bone lazy. You're good for nothing but talking and reading. Reading, reading, reading. You can do that all right. You can't do any real work, can you? No. I suppose you think you're too good for it. Well, I'd like to know where you think you're going to get 60 pounds from. Or the rent come to that. You don't care. You just sit there doing nothing. It's all you've been doing as long as I can remember. Nothing. Month after month for nearly 15 years now. 15 years next May it is. May the 25th. That's our day. I shan't forget in a hurry. I don't know why I married you. I don't. Really, I don't. You made it sound as if it was going to be all right. Promises. We've been rich if we can live on promises. We've got plenty of them. Well, we need to fight for them promises now. 
never anywhere to sit. Hello? Can't we have some other point of view? I'm tired of the end elevation. Eh? Of all the vertebraceous animals, man alone raises his face to the sky. Why avert it? In fact, old man, I'm sick of you turning your back on me, see? Oh, so that's what you're talking about. That's it. The way the wind blows, I expect. What's a fuss? No fuss. Passing a rug. I just don't like it, old man, that's all. Can't help it if the wind blows my straw. Neat and unpack like a pig rooting for truffles, need you? Truffle? Neat and unpack like a pig. Pig? Are you calling me a pig? It's a sight I seem to get of you. Here, you go indoors. I don't want no row with you, and I don't want you to row with me. I don't know what you're after, but I'm a peaceful man. Teetotal too, and a good thing if you was, what? you go inside. You mean to say... I'm asking you civilly to stop unpacking with your back to me. Pig ain't civil, and you ain't sober. You get back to your shop, and let me get on with my work, and stop calling me pig, see? I came here to make a civil request. You came here to make a row. I, I, I don't want no trouble you, see? I don't like the looks of you, see? And I can't stand here all day arguing, see? You're not only lazy, Alfred, you're deceitful. Been trying to hide them from me underneath the counter, haven't you? No wonder we're in trouble. What little money we have got, you've got to throw it away on books. And what's the good of them anyway? Naked string and glue, that's all they are. Tom Kringle's log. A sailor tramp. Wanderings in South America. I don't know why you want to bother your head about such things. Isn't fish born good enough for you? Perhaps if you'd concentrate a bit more on running the business instead of running around South America, we might be a deal better off. Call me a pig, you dicky stinks. You're not the only one, Mr. Rumbold. I've been flapping his mouth about me too, I'm told. Got to unpack how it suits me. Can't unpack with straw blowing into my eyes. I've had just about enough of Mr. Polly's flapping his mouth. He wants a poke in the nose, that's what he wants. Inside, is he? Then you leave him to me. Now, what you want to do? You want to stop flapping your mouth about me, see? I say you want to stop flapping your silly mouth. This place gets more of your mouth than it wants. You don't want to talk so much. Don't I? See this? Do you want a bloody nose? No. Then you want to shut up. You've been asking for it, Alfred. Now you've got it. I've always known this talking of yours would get you into trouble. But you wouldn't listen to me, would you? Oh, no. Never listen to anything I've got to say, do you? It was the same with this house. I told you so at the time. Too many stairs, inconvenient little rooms. All this white paint. You would have it. Shows the dirt something awful. I've always hated this shop always. Ever since the first time you brought me here. You may as well know it now, and that's telling you.
See my cap anywhere? I said cap! I suppose you'd like me to wear this silly mud pie forever. Well, I tell you I won't. I'm sick of it! I'm pretty near sick of everything if it comes to that. into my goods. Anyone see it begin? I did. I was in the shop with the witnesses. I suppose I've got a voice to see me old husband injured. I don't know how to speak the Hole. Hole. Beastly, silly wheeze of a hole. get into it. Hate Fishbourne, hate the high street, hate the shop, hate Miriam, hate my neighbours, every messy one of them. Hate myself too. Sixty pounds. Conk, Maybrick, Thuringer. Next thing you know, I'll be bankrupt. Nearly forty and that's what I've come to. I'm finished. I haven't done any of the things I really wanted to either. I haven't gone anywhere, seen anything. I'm stuck in a silly little shop surrounded by a lot of people I got nothing in common with and who hate the sight of me. Sick of it! It's hopeless. What am I going to do? No sense going on, is there? Might as well be dead. Better. Or kill myself. Kill myself? That's what I'll do. I'll kill myself. Life's insured, place is insured. Don't see it does any harm to her or anyone. Go about it the right way, might even do her a bit of good. Yeah, she ought to be grateful to me, really. That's it. I'll kill myself. Now, what's the best way of going about it? Must plan it properly. Wouldn't do to have it go wrong, wouldn't do at all. Now, what's the best time? Sundays. Sunday evening, she always goes to church. Plenty of firewood and stuff in the cupboard under the stairs. Drum of paraffin, too. I can't think why I never thought of it before. It solves everything. Why not? Suicide arsonical. Good idea. Right out. Come to church. Rather. I've got a lot to be grateful for. You got what you deserve. I suppose I have. You'd do better to come to church than mope. I shan't mope. Well, aren't you going? Go on, go to church. Good riddance. Beastly home. Beastly life. Here goes.
Charles Sonegal. Now for the stairs.
roof before. I'm all disconnected. It's very bumpy, especially the last bit. Can't we sit here for a bit and rest? You sit here for ten minutes, you'll pop like a roast chestnut. Don't you understand me? Roast chestnut. Roast chestnut, pop! There will be a limit to deafness. Come on. I'm here for a I said, come on! Where's he going to me? He's a very quiet man. He likes everything quiet. <laughs> He'll be surprised to see me. <laughs> well, there he is. Can we get it down? There's not much time. Might get stuck in it. You'll get stuck in it. Now come on. Let me do it the old way. This wasn't such a style of boy. They made it with a pen. Polly, you ought to have a medal. That's what you ought to have, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I suppose there'll be a public subscription. Not for those who are insured. Oh, I'm insured. Royal Salamander. Same here. Mine's the Glasgow Sun. Very good company. You insured, Mr. Polly? He deserves to be. Rather, bloody be done. Uh, yes, um, I'm all right. <laughs> Our late Rusp is a bit sick. It didn't reach him. <laughs> Funny thing about fires, you never know where they're going to start. Match, cigarette, anything. Take Mr. Polly here. Lamp, wasn't it? Hmm? Uh, yes, that's right, yes. I upset the lamp. I just lighted it. There's a flare in a moment. So long. Good night. <laughs> you played a brave man's part. If you don't get a medal, I... Well, here, here. Good night, old man. Good night. A man. A hero, I tell you. been thinking. It isn't going to be so bad after all. We shall get your insurance. We can easily begin all over again. Mm. Get a better house. I've always hated them stairs. Choose a better position where there's more doing. Not half so bad. You wanted stirring up. Forgot to cut my throat. 
Miriam. Miriam? Hero. That's what they think. <laughs> Funny. One thing clear, though. If you don't like your life, you can change it. You can make it better, you can make it worse. Surprised he never done it sooner. <laughs> She was Jim. Oh, I'm never Jim. I believe I was having 40 winks, if the truth was told. What can I do for you? Cold meat. There is some cold meat. And room for it. There's some cold boiled beef. A very crisp lettuce. New mustard. And a tankard. A tankard. Looking for work? Yes, uh, in a way. What sort of work do you want? I've never properly thought that out. Been um, looking around for ideas. Will you have your beef in the tap or outside? That's the tap. Hear that? Hear what? Listen. Hear it? Mm-hmm. That's the ferry and there isn't a ferryman. Could I? Can you punt? Never tried. Well, pull the pole out before you reach the end of the punt, that's all. Try. <laughs>
You eat better than you punt. I dare say you could learn to punt. You want a ferryman? I want an odd man about the place. I'm odd, all right. What's the wages? Not much, but you get tips and pickings. I have a sort of feeling it'd suit you. I have a sort of feeling it would. Give me a trial. I've more than half a mind. I suppose you're all right. I suppose you haven't done anything. Bit of arson? So long as you haven't the habit. My first time, ma'am, and my last. It's all right if you haven't been to prison. It's not what a man's happened to do makes him bad. It's bringing it home to him and spoiling his self-respect does the mischief. You don't look a wrong un. Have you been to prison? Oh, never. No reformatory? Not me. Do I look reformed? And you paint and carpenter a bit. Right for it. Have a bit of cheese. If I might. Yes, what you might have to do. Tar fences, dig potatoes and swab out boats, clean the boots and sweep the chimneys, do a little house painting and window cleaning, sweep out and sand the tap on the bar, clean pewter, wash glasses, beat the carpets and mats, clean the bottles, don't forget to save the corks. I shall want you to scrub the floors, look after the ferry, of course, and deliver bottled beer and soda water siphons in the neighbourhood. Oh, and there's just one other thing. You'll have to defend the premises in general, especially at night, and the orchard in particular. Think you can do it? Can but try. I suppose when there's nothing else on hand, I might even do a bit of fishing. <laughs> Think I'll go and take a look at the garden, all right? I was first. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be the ferryman. I see. Can you punt? You ought to have seen me earlier on this afternoon. I can imagine it. I've seen the others. What others? Uncle Jim has scooted. Scooted? He comes and scoots them. He'll scoot you too, I expect. Yes, I'm not a scooter. Uncle Jim is. When Uncle Jim comes back, he'll cut her insides out. Perhaps when he like her, let me see. He don't like strangers about Uncle Jim, don't he? He's a scorcher. He only came back a little while ago and he scooted three men. Really? He can swear. He's going to teach me soon as I can whistle properly. Teach you to swear? And spit. How old are you? Seven. Who's Uncle Jim? That little niece of mine been saying things. Bits of things. Oh, I suppose I've got to tell you sooner or later. He's the drawback to this place. That's what he is, the drawback. I'd hoped you mightn't hear so soon. Yes, but who is he? She says he scoops people. Oh, I suppose I've got to tell you. He's my sister's husband, her second, that child's stepfather. In and out of jail for the last seven years and me a widow woman and helpless against his doings. He takes me money and he takes me things. He won't let no man stay here to protect me or do the boats or work the ferry. The ferry's getting a scandal. I buy him off when it comes to it, but he's back again worse than ever, prowling round and doing evil. Uh, biggish sort of man, I expect, eh? How much did you give him last time? Three golden pounds. That won't last very long, he said, but there ain't no hurry. I'll be back. Hmm, well, I'm, uh, I'm not one of your herculaceous sort, you know. <laughs> Nothing very wonderful bicipitally. You'll scoot. It ain't reasonable to expect you to do anything else. How long since he was here last? Two months it is, come the seventh. He came in through that very back door. In he comes and down he sits in that chair. I come to torment you, he says, you old something. Then begins at me. No human being could ever have been called such things before. It made me cry out. And now, he said, just to show I ain't afraid of hurting you, he says, he ups and 
twists my wrists. You know, uh, you two oughtn't to be left. Well, I don't see it's any affair of mine. I'd, uh, I'd like to have a look at him, though, somehow, before I go. Not my business, of course. What's that? Only a customer. Seems to be a good sort of crib for a fellow who's looking for trouble. Well, mister, you the new bloke at the Potwell Inn? Suppose I am. You got to shift. Shift? Why? Because the Potwell Inn's my beat, see? And you got to shift. Suppose I don't. Look, I'm one of these blokes but don't stick at things, see? I don't stick at nothing. Uh, well, what do you think you'll do? What, if you don't clear out? Yes. Cool, you better fear. What won't I do to you once I start on you? I'll make a mess of you. I'll do your injuries. I'll kick you ugly. I'll hurt you in horrible ways, horrible, ugly ways. You'll cry to see yourself, see? Well, it's... It's too late, late to go tonight. I'll be round tomorrow early. And if I find you... We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll consider your suggestions. You better... I'll make a gory mess of you. I'll cut bits off of you, kick you ugly, cut your liver out, spread it all about, I will. I don't care a dead rat one way or the other. I didn't think he would. Never mind. Not my business. I'm not going to have anything to do with it. Nice place, pleasant woman. Pretty little girl, too. No concern of mine. What are they to me? Nothing. No. No, 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 no. Uncle Jim's right. He has a claim. Sort of a claim. No, I, I had a very agreeable holiday, and now I'd better go back to Miriam. Miriam? I shan't go back to her. I hate the sight of her. No, better, better push on somewhere else. Yeah, that's it. It's the best thing. Push on. Sky. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's the matter? Well, come on! Ought to go back on that. Mustn't run away again. I've done that too often. I've got to stay and fight. That's what I've got to do. If I don't, I'll perish. If I do, I'll perish. Not my business! Not my blasted business! Wish I never set eyes on the rotten end. Oh, why was I ever born? One kick in the stomach could settle a chap like me. Please. Please! It isn't my affair! You come back. 
back. How oh, there? He's mad drunk and looking for the child. Where is he? Locked upstairs. Right. I'll see to it. Out this way. out here seems to want someone. I think he appears to have brought you a present of fish. He's hiding. That's what he's doing, hiding. I, I wish you'd come outside and persuade him to go away. His language isn't quite the thing, uh, ladies. It never was. Come out of it, you pockmarked rat! 
Now, my man, be careful what you're saying. And who in all the world is here after you to call me my man? You gold-eyed geezer, you. Restrain yourself. Stop it! Ah, well, that's the bloke I'm looking for. Summer attacks everywhere. Get the clothes out, somebody. You get out of bed, 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 bed. It's in the garden. Ah. He's fainted. A kid, perhaps. Look out! Oh, Horace. Oh, 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 look, oh, this is not nice. Jim, haven't you heard? Jim's been lagged again, missus, three days ago. Jim in jail? What for? Tealing a hatchet. Uh, hatchet, did you say? Yes, a hatchet. Oh. What did he steal a hatchet for? He said he wanted a hatchet. I, uh, I wonder what he wanted a hatchet for. Oh, I dare say he had a use for it. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I shall stick to it, hatchets or no hatchets. Um, how much do you say they've given him? Ten days. Ten days? That's what I said. Ten days. What are you doing down here? It's past midnight. You put that thing away, you know. Very well, I won't have a gun in the house, I told you. You leave it down here. Get rid of it first thing in the morning. Didn't you hear what I said? I don't like them. Frighten me to death, they do. Now, you leave it down here where it's safe. Well, I, uh, I don't want to do anything you wouldn't like. No wish to frighten you, but, uh, perhaps you've forgotten. Forgotten what? Oh, you mean Jim? Yes. Due out today. Hatchet. Remember? All the same, I don't like the idea of firearms, nasty things. You never know when they're going to go off. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to fire it. No, it's not my idea at all. I'm only going to use it for show, frighten any trespassers. Well, I shan't get a wink of sleep, not with that thing in the house. Look. Not even loaded. Besides, give me a bit of confidence. Well, don't you do anything silly now? Good night. Good night.
promised myself. First chance I've had. Three years. Three good, enjoyable years. I worked hard too. Miriam. I wonder what's happened to her. What's she doing? Should have made sure she was all right. Oh, blow. Well, I ought to go back, oughtn't I? Make sure she's not in want. Well, I don't have to see her, of course, actually speak to her. No, it'll upset her, probably. Caught many? No, not many. I was just wondering. Well, it puts you out very much if I went off for a day or two. Bit of a holiday. No. No, that'll be all right. There won't be much doing now till Thursday. I have tea. Well, you can. But our tea room's upstairs. My sister's been cleaning it out and it's a bit upset. It would be. I beg your pardon? I said, uh, I didn't mind. Up here. I dare say there'll be a table. Nothing like turning everything upside down when you're cleaning. It's my sister's way. She'll be back soon, I expect. It's a nice light room when it's tidy. Shall I put you a table over here? Oh, let me. Unusual name. Polly? Polly and Larkins. Real, I suppose. Polly's my sister's name. She married a Mr. Polly. Widow, I presume. Three years, come October. Found round he was. There was a lot of talk in the place. Wouldn't have known him, my sister wouldn't, if it hadn't been for his name sewn in his trousers. Must have been rather a shock to her. It was a shock. But sometimes a shock's better than a long agony. Wasn't a particularly good sort, I don't suppose, this, uh, Mr. Polly. He was a wearing husband. I often pitied my sister. He was one of the sort that... Dissolute? No, not exactly dissolute. Feeble's more the word. Weak he was. Weak as water. Business brisk? Mustn't grumble, we'd do quite nicely. Was there an inquest on this, what's his name, uh, Polly? Of course. You're sure it was him? What do you mean? Who else could it have been? Oh, nobody. Oh, of course. I'll just go and get your tea. Business all right? Miriam all right? Must be. Doing nicely, Annie said. Well, that's all I wanted to know, isn't it? Satisfying? Completely. Right out. <laughs> sometimes.
Whatever have we done to deserve an evening like this, eh? Look at him. You know, sometimes I think I live for sunsets. <laughs> I don't see it does you any good. <laughs> no, not me, but I do. Whenever there's signs of a good sunset and I'm not too busy, we ought to come and sit out here. Time we were going in or party, supper to get. Can't sit here forever, you know. 